Hello, thank you for joining me today while I go over Como's latest and greatest bundle board H model. This board comes in sizes of 65, 75, and 86. It is our Android 11 with up to 40 points of touch. Even better, you might notice that we have a even more vibrant screen. This is due to our glued glass technology where our glass is bonded to the LCD screen. This improves your viewing angle as well as the image itself. The board comes with Android 11 built into it, which means you can use various different apps such as screen sharing, polling, annotation, pulling up your web browser, calculator, timer, but you can also use your computer directly with the screen. The Bundle Board H has a couple front buttons for easy access. You have your power button, which with a long hold, you'll turn off the screen and this button will turn red. If you click it once, the board goes into standby mode. If you tap the screen or click it again, I'll power back on. The home button takes you to the home Android screen. The back button will just take you back a button. The settings icon will take you to your system settings. The volume will control the audio of the board. Our display was designed with you in mind. We want to make it as simple and easy to use so you can spend less time learning and more time presenting. Over here on this side of the board, you will see some of your main inputs. You can easily change the input name by just clicking and holding the button. Now you can relabel your inputs to what your preferred input name is. For instance, if the front HDMI is always occupied for a guest computer, you can rename this to say guest. One thing I love about our screen is that we have USB-C capability. So what does that mean? That means you can use one single cable, which is the USB-C, to plug your USB-C compatible device, which could be a laptop, directly into the display. We have USB-C ports in the front and on the side of the screen. So how that would look like is taking your USB-C cable, plugging it right into my laptop, I'll plug the other end into the front, and ta-da! you have your computer right on your screen. The board also supports HDMI, VGA, and display ports. With those connections, you will have to use a USB touch cable. Each port you'll see comes with a USB touch port next to it. So on the front, it's right here. On the side, it's next to it. The panel does not require additional calibration, which means once your device is plugged in, with the correct cables. In this case, USB-C is just one cable. You can go up to your screen and touch it. You can also access any other websites, software applications, basically anything that you want on your computer. You can access that right from the display. Our boards are compatible with Chrome, Windows, and Mac OS. You also have access to our free whiteboarding software that has plenty of tools, backgrounds, and different objects. Our boards do support multi-touch, so you can have people come up and write on the board at the same time. You can connect different devices to the display with the multiple inputs that the display has, such as a document camera. When a device is connected, you'll see a green light next to your inputs. This is when I can say, okay, well, I'm always going to use this input for my document camera, so this is my chance to rename it. Now I know this input is my document camera, and when there's a green light on it, that means it is ready to use. Now I can show my textbook, and if there's anything I want to write on, I have access to the overlay annotation. The remote control also allows me to use the freeze button, which is a snowflake icon in the middle of your remote. Maybe I want to display some problem sets for my students or my participants. I can click freeze. When I'm ready to move on to the next page, I can click unfreeze. Under your inputs, you also have access to a couple other things. You have your source settings, 
which allows you to configure what source you want your screen to power onto. If I'm always going to be using my screen with a Windows computer or my Mac computer or my Chromebook, then I can go over here and click on that specific source that I want my display powered onto. So that could be my HDMI 2, it could be my Type-C port, whatever input that your computer is connected to. Otherwise, I can just select last source. It'll power onto the last source, which might be my most used source. I personally like to power mine onto either my computer or my Android, which is the home page. You have a clock on the home page of your display as well as a main focus of the day prompt. On this side of the screen, you have your quick tools. This is where you can add your most used apps. If there are any apps that you don't want here, you can just click and hold and click the X button. You can access the apps on your screen by clicking on the apps button. Over here, you have a selection of different apps where you can also download more through the store. With the apps, you now have ability to do even more with the screen, such as opening up my slides. The Bundle Board H also has a couple built-in tools you can use. One really cool tool that I like to use is found in our annotation toolbar. You can click on the screen and you'll see a side toolbar menu pop up. Click on it. You can either use this to annotate on things. So let's say I have my annotation pulled up. I can write on here or I can do other tools such as an instant poll. Using the instant polling function, I can gauge what my participants are thinking in real time. After your participants scan the QR code and vote, you will see the total number of participants that have voted. So now I can view my result and see what my participants think about this photo. You can continue to annotate on the screen with either the pens that the board come with or your finger. The overlay annotation feature is really awesome because you can annotate on any slide or any input and be able to also capture it with either the QR code where you can save it onto your device and send it out, email, save it, or you can save it directly onto your board. Your toolbar is accessible under any input, any page. So I always have access to all my apps if I just swipe up. I also have access to my overlay annotation right here where I, we, I can do overlay annotation, screen snipping. I could go to my whiteboard, which is my digital whiteboard. I also have more access to other tools such as my spotlight mode where I'll black out everything except for a specific area. I have a timer. So I can set a stopwatch or a timer. I have the ability to do an instant poll where I can take a lifetime survey. I can do a screen recording and if I have an additional mic, it will also record my voice. You have a countdown. So I can do a days until countdown. So let's say Christmas, 249 days until Christmas. The bottom toolbar here gives you access to a couple other tools. Number one, the arrow key right above your toolbar allows you to flip your toolbar. So let's say I want to access my settings, but I don't want to walk to that side of the board. I can click on the arrow button and that will flip my toolbar over. Now let's flip it back. On the bottom of the screen, you also have your back button that takes you back a page. Home, which takes you to the home Android screen. Your lock screen, which locks your screen until you unlock it. Or your touch lock, which disables the touch on your screen in case you do not want anyone touching the screen. In your settings, you have access to a couple items. You have access to configuring your wireless network or your Bluetooth network. You can configure additional cameras that are connected to your display, which you can connect the camera to the USB port. You can configure different wallpapers, your school or business or building logo, or you can select from a series of different photos 
that we have provided to you on the board. You have your date and time editor. The board will automatically recognize the date and time based off of the Wi-Fi, but you can also manually change it. Apps is where you can configure your apps. You have your language, your power settings. So this is where you can configure your standby mode and when to program your panel to turn off. If I want to set when to power off my screen, I can configure it on the power off by alarm. So if I want to turn off my screen every day at 5 p.m., I can set it to that on here. I'll set it a little bit later in case. An awesome feature is also the feature to auto wake up the screen when the source is plugged in. That means if you have a computer connect to the screen, you power on your computer, it will also wake up the screen. Under security, this is where you can set the password of your display. This is also where you can go if you want to lock different applications. More settings gives you additional access to your sound, your brightness, and other features. Tasks over here will show you which apps that you have running. You can go around and click on previous apps or you can exit it out. Next is the get started button. This is just a quick refresher on the different buttons and toolbars that the panel has. The browser is our internet browser. So with the onboard internet browser, you have access to various different websites that you can go to, scroll on, and interact with. So over here you have your screencasting. You can cast up to nine different devices up to our screen. With our screencasting software, you do have a settings where you can go and you can rename this board. So right now it's defaulted at this name, but I can rename this to, let's say I rename this to Room 501. Now when I try to find my device, it'll show up under 501. If I want to set a pin code so other people don't connect onto this, I can do that as well. I can set my code to refresh. I can either choose to show my code or hide my code. Um, and then again, I can pick the amount of the maximum amount of um, devices I want to cast up to here. So I'll just change this to nine. I'm going to enable Miracast, Chromecast, Airplay, and I think that looks good to me. So this is an awesome feature because I can cast up to nine devices, like I mentioned. Um, if you have a Apple device, you can just use your AirPlay right to it. If I want to cast a different device, let's pull up my computer. Okay, here's my second device. And you can continue to add up those devices. So though our screen supports Chromecast, AirPlay, Miracast, what's special about the built-in software client app that you can download at eShare.app is that it also enables touch. Now I can have full control over my desktop wirelessly. So this is all wire-free. I don't even have my computer connected to it using HDMI or USB-C. I have full control over my computer wirelessly and I can use my overlay annotation to draw right on my screen. Using my annotation toolbar, I can also screen sniff. Now I need to find my picture file and that's where the files explorer comes in. Now I could have shared that file through my QR code and scanned into my phone, but the board also has onboard memory. Under pictures, screenshots, that's where all my screenshots go. Files, then pictures, then screenshot. In your file explorer, you can go and create new folders as well. So all I have to do is click create new folder and I can create one right here. Firm. If I want to move my screenshot to my new folder, I can click and hold and I can move to Maybe I realized that I mislabeled my folder. Now I can go, click and hold, and click rename to Mac. A 
Additionally, you can upload your files directly onto your Google Drive or OneDrive by just clicking and holding and clicking the cloud icon. Now I can select either my Google Drive or OneDrive to upload my file to. Another feature of our bundle board age is our digital whiteboard. So under apps, you can click on here. I have it saved as one of my favorites up here, whiteboard. This board, you can write on it so I can create different lessons. I can do different things such as change the background by clicking down here. Over here is your pen tool. This is where you can select different colors to choose from. We have a special feature where you can program the thick and thin side of the pen to be different colors. So basically how that looks like is one side is this big white color, the other side is a red color. You can have multiple touch points on the screen. Right now it's set at a single point, which means I can move this around, but maybe I want this to be a more interactive lesson where I have different students or participants come up to my display. So now I can click on this button right here, which is the pointy button. You'll see multi-touch points pop up. So that means I can have multiple people right up here at the same time. If I want to erase, I have an eraser button over here. I can just click on swipe and erase everything, or I can use my palm. You can also use a dry erase board eraser that works really well as well. You also have a selection tool, which means if I were to write here, I can select this object and I can duplicate it. It's a very happy day. Or I can use it to delete. You have the forward and backwards button, so I can also undo by clicking back redo by clicking forward, or you also have access to importing different photos or using shapes. Let's add a page right there. Maybe I want to create a Venn diagram. We can do a comparison against dogs and cats. And then just to throw it in, let's add an extra activity. Let's do the poll. And again, you can do a QR code and do a quick instant poll. So now with my Venn diagram, I can check on my other slides. And maybe I want to toggle back to my first one, or I can use these arrow keys. Other features found in this button is split screen writing. So now I can have different people come up and write on each side of the screen. You can also add in different photos. So let's go over here, click import photo. I'll click on my image files. And let's add in this image that we took a screenshot of earlier. You can select it and move it around, resize it. And you can also continue to draw on this. When you're done with the lesson, you have the option to either save your file or you can exit out and just delete it. To save your file, you have save file or you can upload it right to your Google Drive. So if you click on here, you can either upload your current page or all your pages. You can save it as an IWB file, which means it's edible, or a PNG file, which is good for distribution. Or you can save it as both and you can click OK. And then you have the option to save it onto your Google Drive or your OneDrive. You also have the option to scan it in with the QR code. I really like this feature because I can just save it onto my phone and share it through email. Well, that's a wrap on our tutorial of the Bundle Board H. Hopefully, I will see you in the near future. And thank you. Have a great day. And thank you for your interest in Como.